Here we are at Jackson Mills 4-H camp, but this week end, this weekend is actually the Jubilee in Lewis County. This is the old dining hall area. And what they have here every year around Labor Day is car shows and all kinds of good stuff. All these people come to enjoy this, the crafts and the food. This is the old man ashes stomping grounds right here. Right up here is where I used to stay and play at 4-H camp. Can't say we stayed in there. But over here was our cabins. Let's see what's going on. Used to walk this trail all the time.
the cabins are all named after counties in West Virginia. We stayed in Monroe. And this one over here was Randolph, I believe. Yep. So this is the old 4-H camp boys section. Girls weren't allowed. Here's old Stonewall Jackson blacksmith shop. Look what's going on here. Look at all this. Grist mill thing here, or this coming up there. We shall see. Now we're going to find what this Red Rose Guaranteed Feeds is right in here. This is amazing. Look at this. Guaranteed feed. They're going to guarantee feed us here. Here's this oil-filled wagon. The remnants of the past. Inside here is vehicles of early West Virginia. This is how they used to get around back in the day. That's the Thornhill Wagon Company. And over here is a little Ketter Buggy Company, I bet. This used to be the old Ketter Buggy Company. Now they used to run from Clarksburg, I believe, all the way to Weston back and forth. Now, what they used to do, they, I believe they hired about 3,000 people for the oil fields that went in back then. And amazingly enough, they still have the one horse sleighs. Winters in West Virginia are rough, so they needed this to get back and forth. Is that an outhouse? Let's see. I don't know what that is. Some place they used to keep their wood? I don't know. I don't know. Here's the old sawmill. Let's take a look and see here. That's how they used to get the wood to make their own houses and everything. Edward Jackson's Stonewall grandfather came to the West Fork Valley with his family in 1801 and built this log grist mill right here. Now, I don't know if they had all this back in the 1800s, but around here, we can get through. Which I don't know if we can. I know I could probably walk down there, but me and my luck, I'd fall right through.
and it cuts. And the cutting is the grinding in the grain that ends up uh, that ends up grinding everything that is in between the stones. Now, once we once that happens, the only place the meal is up to go is out the uh, is out the chute in the bottom, where we collect at the back. Now, in order to power all of this, we need to use a water wheel. And as I said, the Blaker family did, in fact, have a very long lifespan here in the mill, so they eventually modernized. They did have a vertical water wheel, but eventually what happened was they decided to uh, get rid of that vertical water wheel, and they went to a horizontal turbine. Now, so the way to power a turbine is Jeff's going to pull down that lever on the wall. It's going to allow water to flow from our mill pond down into our, uh, down into our turbine chamber. The turbine chamber is actually empty, it's underneath the ground uh, in the basement. And so what's going to happen is that once we fill that completely with water, we're going to have Keith turn that red wheel over there, and he is actually going to, uh, uh, to open the gate on the back side of the turbine and allow the water to go through. And once that happens, we'll have enough pressure and water weight to turn that stone. Why do we need so much? That stone is incredibly heavy. It's 1,500 pounds. And this is where the water's going in, they talk about, from this little pond right here. Now, I couldn't get very many pictures of I me, mean, too many people in there for what I wanted to try to give an example for. So we may be coming back to this eventually in time. But this is the old grist mill and saw mill. Now, we're going up to the old homes up here now. This is Stonewall Jackson's home birthplace. Or where he lived. I don't know if he was actually born here or not. So let's take a look see and a gander up here and see what we can find. This is the McWhorter cabin. Henry McWhorter was born in New Jersey, but settled here in 1927. Well, no, it was moved to Jacksonville in 1927. Huh. Let's take a look and see what an old house looks from the 1700s. Wow. Look at this. Just think we could live here. This is what we would have lived like. Had an open stove, like a fireplace, stove too. Eat table and sleep, one room. Now, I believe their crapper was right there, maybe. Yep, you had a crap right there. Now, old house, there's an old pumpkin patch, squash patch, whatever is right here today. We used to do everything from right here. The old time windows. And this is the Mary Conrad cabin. Now in 1845, they built this front half of what is now known as the Mary Conrad cabin on a track of land, southern Lewis County. 